Hello guys, this is Sayyid Muhammad Vakas. The topic which I am going to discuss today with you guys is related to VRF system. So I am going to make 5 videos related to VRF system, explain you the different uh, things in the VRF system. So first video will be related to the VRF system design basics. That is I am going to explain what is VRF system and second thing is VRF system design branching layout how you are gonna do the layout of the VRF system and the VRF system design limitations in the second video I am gonna explain you guys about the outdoor indoor unit models second remote uh, control for the VRF system and the uh, system design basic configurations in the third video I am gonna explain you guys about VRF system designing and selection using excel sheet and uh, just like this we uh, I have prepared an excel sheet where we will do the designing and selection of the VRF system I am in my third video so I am going to explain you guys about this excel sheet and the fourth one I am going to use uh, uh, software for designing and selection of the VRF system so software which I am going to use is uh, this selection tool software as you can see it will be like this so I am going to draw outdoor units and indoor units to explain you guys about the designing and selection of VRF system using this uh, software selection tool software for VRF system so in my end of fifth video I will explain you guys about the additional refrigerant charge calculation for the VRF system so let's start the first video which is related to VRF system design basics part 1 in which I'm gonna explain you what is VRF VRV system and branching system layout and VRF system design limitations so now I'm gonna explain you guys what is VRF system and how does it works so basically uh, operation of a VRF system is fully built in inside the system and the uh, system gets input from the desired comfort temperature and the outside ambient temperature and according to that data it implements its logic to get the desired comfort condition as you can see over here we have one outdoor unit and uh, different types of or multiple indoor units are available here you can see the cassette type and the uh, uh, split type air conditioning in, uh, indoor units are here and the different types of remote controllers you can see you, we can use centralized controller we can use wired controller we can use wireless controller it depends on the type of the application which you are going to use so you can see this outdoor unit, this indoor unit is remote controllers and this is the refrigerant piping in the purple color and it's a communication wiring in the green color so how does it work basically uh, I'm gonna explain you one example for example once a user turn on the indoor unit one of the indoor unit among these using a remote controller the outdoor unit will get the signal this outdoor unit will get the signal and uh, it will start working and at this this point this outdoor unit will gonna examine the outdoor condition temperature and the operating indoor condition requirements of these indoor units for example it will check the operation mode of the indoor units and set point temperature so according to that the outdoor unit will operate the compressor at the same exact level uh, per, as per the demand of the indoor units so when another unit is turned on and the, uh, for example the second cassette type unit is turned on the uh, outdoor unit basically uh, recalculates the requirement from, from all indoor units and it will increase the compressor output according to the required level of demand so this is how a VRF system basically works uh, there are three types of VRF system one is uh, cooling only, second heat pump and third is heat recovery cooling only only cooling is available no heating is not available heat pumps indoor uh, unit can either uh, heat or cool but not heating and cooling at the same time for the heat pump system and the heat recovery and cooling and heating may be available by each indoor unit and independently at same time so this is how we are a system works now the second thing I'm gonna explain over here is uh, related to uh, branching system layout as already mentioned here we are a system branching system layout so 
so vrf system the the branching which we can use so basically i'm going to explain as per uh, related to toshiba air conditioning so this manual which i took over here is related to toshiba every uh, manufacturer or supplier has its own manual that inst in instructions so so the thing is uh, the common uh, layout which you can use while designing the vrf system is these five you can use either a uh, line branching system you can use a header branching system you can use a uh, header branching system after line branching line branching system after header branching and header branching system after header branching but before proceeding to mm, this system layout i'm going to explain you what is this branching joint and what is this header how it looks like so uh, this one is uh, first one is a line branching system this is outdoor unit this is the indoor unit and this are the y shape branching joints over here and the second one is the header header branching system this is our header and these are the indoor units are connected to the outdoor unit with this branching header so how does it look like i will show you how branching joint look like how branching header looks like so yeah as you can see over here this is a y shape branching joint this is how it looks like this is how we can connect the outdoor unit with the indoor unit using this y shape branching joint and uh, or different out indoor units we can connect to each other and this is the header as i show you over there though so this is how it looks like header and this is how it looks like uh, this uh, y shape branching joint so let's move back over there so this is the first layout which you can use while designing your vrf system second one is the header branching system there is no y shape branching joint in this one and the third one uh, which you can use over here is the header branching after line branching you can see that the outdoor unit is here then we have y shape branching joint then indoor units and then header branching header uh, branching over here and then we have four indoor units over here as you can see that uh, in this layout header is coming after y shape branching joint so this is why it's called the header branching after line branching and the last two system layouts are not available with every unit model but toshiba smmsi smmsi means uh, uh, simple modular multi system i series of this toshiba so this is only available with toshiba you need to check the uh, supplier manual if you are using with some other supplier you need to check their manual whether they are allowing this type of configuration or not so the reason why i'm telling you need to check this before designing so as you can see over here we have a fourth layout that is line branching after header branching as you can see that is the header branching and then we have y shape branch joint joint again here and uh, second one is header branching after header branching you can see header then another branch going to the header and then we have indoor units so this is the header branching after header branching as you can see header branching after header branching and line branching after header branching after header we have line branching so but these two configurations only available last two configuration is only available with toshiba smms i units so as you can see over here this is the same thing i explained above y shape branching joints only line branching here this is only header branching here this is a line plus header branching but header is coming after line branching as i told you these last two configurations only available with toshiba smms i series so uh, you can see that this one is line branching after header branching so after header we have line branching here so this one is header branching after header branching you can see header one branch is coming to another header so this is another configuration available in toshiba smms i units So now I'm going to explain you about uh, design limitations the last one we are a system design limitations 
so every supply is obviously giving you some limitation while designing the VRF system so the same thing over here you can see the design limitations so I'm gonna explain the next page over here so Toshiba is uh, allowing you the al uh, uh, allowable equivalent length from as you can see this is outdoor unit these are the different indoor units here available as you can see this is the farthest indoor unit from the outdoor unit so Toshiba allowing the allowable equivalent length from outdoor unit as you can see in the red line to the farthest indoor unit is 235 meter so your equivalent length should be less than equal to 235 meter while you design your VRF system using Toshiba's manual and second thing as you can see over here from outdoor unit this uh, line in the blue color this is the main piping length up till here why it is main because from here we have start a branch that's going to one unit second third fourth fifth and other. so this is our first branching section so outdoor unit to the first branching section this is our main pipe length that should be less than equal to 120 meter and uh, the green one is the first branching length first branching length means from first branching section to the furthest indoor unit you can see this is the furthest indoor unit and this is our first branching section so this length from first branching section to the furthest indoor unit should be less than equal to 90 meters so more limitations I will explain you here in another page and the height limitations you can see that Toshiba SMSI leads the industry with support of height up to 40 meters between indoor units on single system for example 11 story building this is enough height to fully cover the entire floor as well as the elevator halls so you can see the height limitation with Toshiba SMSI is giving you that is 40 meter from indoor unit to the indoor unit from the top indoor unit to the bottom indoor unit they are allowing you 40 meter height so your height should be less than equal to 40 meters so this is the design limitation uh, of the height between indoor units so furthermore I will explain you about more limitations uh, with this example as you can see that this is our outdoor units there are four outdoor units which we have used over here with the names like header unit, follower unit 1, follower 2, follower 3 so as you can see that uh, now now I'm gonna explain you why we give this one header and why this one follower 1, follower 2, follower 3 so over here we'll go as you can see over here header unit is the outdoor unit nearest to the connected indoor units as you can see that this outdoor unit is connected to the nearest indoor unit others are furthest from further away from this indoor unit that's why this is called header unit because this is nearest to the indoor unit and the other three are called follower with the name follower 1, follower 2 and follower 3 so and one more thing that you need to keep in mind while designing VRF system that install the outdoor units in order of their capacities that is header unit 1 capacity should be greater than follower 1 should be greater than follower 2 should be greater than follower 3 so that means this header unit it should have the maximum capacity for example we have installed 46 horsepower outdoor units over here so 46 uh, we gonna install 16 horsepower here 10 here 10 here 10 here so this capacity of the outdoor unit should be higher than this one and this capacity should be higher than this one and this outdoor capacity should be higher than this one so you have to arrange them according to their capacity and uh, more things you need to understand here is uh, height difference between outdoor to outdoor unit the Toshiba allowed is less than equal to 5 meters and uh, main piping length I already explained you from main piping length to the first branching section this is called first branching section because from here one branch is going to this branching header second one is going to Y shape branching joint so this after main piping length this is our first branching section 
and main piping length we already explained it should be less than equal to 120 meters and uh, total equivalent length is also we saw uh, before that is uh, from outdoor unit to the furthest indoor unit as you can see this unit j is the furthest indoor unit so total equivalent length from outdoor unit follower d to the indoor unit j that is 235 meter should be less than equal to 235 meter and uh, allowable length from first branching section to the furthest indoor unit that is 90 meters so this should be less than equal to 90 meters and the height from indoor unit from top indoor unit to the bottom indoor unit should be less than equal to 40 meters and uh, one more limitation over here that is height from outdoor unit to the uh, last indoor unit from outdoor unit to the last indoor unit the allowable height is 70 meters so your height should be less than equal to 70 meters and while you design the VRF system you need to take care of uh, where you have to use the T and where you have to use the Y shaped branching joint while you make connections for uh, um, outdoor units for liquid line you need to use this T shape joints for the liquid piping and while you do the gas piping connections you need to use Y shape branching joints for the gas piping and make sure that these uh, their posture should be horizontal not vertical or not in some other position because if you install them in the wrong way you will not get the desired uh, temperature condition and there will be a fluctuation in the system so as per Toshiba you need to install them like this that's why this one is not good you need to install in this way for liquid piping not in this way and uh, you need to install the gas piping Y shape branching joints in this position not in this way so there are other things mentioned here it's the same thing already explained you over there you can read it by yourself if you have any problem you can contact me so this is how this uh, VRF system works and uh, I'll, I'll explain you the VRF system branching system layout for your designing of the VRF system and the VRF system design limitations I explained you over here so you need to keep in mind these uh, design limitation while designing your VRF system because every supplier has its own limitations you need to read the manual for designing of VRF system so in my second video I'm going to explain you guys about the VRF system uh, outdoor indoor unit models their remote control used for the VRF system and some basic configuration examples so these are the things we're going to cover in this video so let's start with outdoor indoor unit model selection so as you can see over here I have a table uh, related to outdoor unit models you can see over here uh, we have inverter unit and these are the single unit models uh, he, uh, these are the heat pumps and these are the cooling only models and this is their horsepower corresponding horsepower and uh, this is the cooling capacity as you can see over here and this one is the heating capacity and the number of connectable indoor units for each outdoor unit as you can see that these are the single outdoor unit models for heat pump and uh, cooling only models and these are the combined outdoor unit models with the standard models and high efficiency models so this is important to keep in mind while selecting the outdoor unit so basically you is gonna select outdoor unit based on two factors what the first factor is number of connectable indoor units and the second one is the total capacity of the indoor units I'm gonna explain this later when we'll see an example of system basic configuration so just keep in mind about these things so as you can see that we have a, a stand efficiency model 42 horsepower system it is divided into three outdoor units one is 16 horsepower other is 14 and third one is 12 horsepower so 
these are the number of combined outdoor units so if you have 42 horsepower you will have 3 outdoor units 16, 14 and 12 and make sure to arrange them in order of their capacities 16 horsepower uh, will come first and it will be header and the other two act as follower as I already explained in my first video so similarly if you have a high efficiency model so you can select your uh, outdoor unit from this table out, uh, high efficiency models so move back to the move to the next page you can see the heat pump models over here all of them are outdoor unit this, uh, this is their capacity core, the horsepower and this is their model number and the combined outdoor units this is first is for standard efficiency and second for high efficiency model now you need to understand the nomenclature of VRF system you can see MMY, MAP, OO, OHT8 so MMY is basically modular multi as you can uh, as I told you this is SMMS outdoor unit so it is modular multi series then M stand for single outdoor unit model and if there is no mark between MMY and AP there is no mark that means it's a combined model if M is there that means a single model as you can see over here this is MMY MAP so all uh, up till here 16 are single model you can see over here number of combined outdoor units are one since there is no M over here that's why we have number of combined outdoor units more than one that is two three and in the high efficiency model also from two to four maximum number of combined outdoor units are four so this is a 48 horsepower system with uh, outdoor units four So now we have the cooling only model you can see over here this is the capacity core this is the model name and number of combined units for cooling only model and this is a high efficiency model this is for standard efficiency model standard uh, models and uh, its nomenclature is also same like uh, heat pump the only difference is we don't have H over here because H stands for the heat pump and these are the cooling only models so there is no H over here as you can see we don't have any H over here but in our heat pump models we have H over here so all of them are heat pump models so these are indoor units different types of indoor units are available that uh, uh, discharge cassette type and uh, compact cassette type one way Cassette type, concealed duct type, high static pressure, and flow standing. So different types of uh, indoor units are also available. When we uh, uh, have an example, then we're going to select the indoor unit from uh, these tables. As you can see, this is a capacity rank. This is a capacity core. Capacity rank. Uh, uh, now you need to understand what is a capacity rank. Capacity rank is basically representing the BTUs per hour. So this 9 means 9000 BTUs per hour and this 48 means 48000 BTUs per hour and this capacity code is uh, uh, nothing but the horsepower of the indoor unit so this indoor unit has 1 horsepower this one has 5 horsepower and these are the cooling capacities in kilowatt and heating capacities in kilowatt so the reason why I am telling you about this table so you need to understand how we are going to select the machine from this table so let's take an example to select the machine uh, before selecting the machine you need to understand one more table that's a combined unit for the combined condition for indoor and outdoor units as I told you capacity rank is nothing but BTUs per hour and capacity core is nothing but horsepower as you can uh, see as I told you for selecting the outdoor unit you need to check two factors uh, maximum number of connectable indoor units and total capacity code of the indoor unit basically these two things decide your outdoor units capacity so as you can see these are heat pump models and these are the cooling only these are standard models and uh, below over here we have high efficiency models 
and this is the capacity code of the outdoor unit maximum number of indoor units that you can connect to your system and the capacity code of the indoor unit so uh, let's say you have selected uh, uh, 10 horsepower system but how you have selected this 10 horsepower system let's say if you have 14 uh, indoor units in your project and the capacity code of the indoor units is 12.5 so as you can see that 12.5 is lies between 5 to 13.5 and number of connectable indoor unit maximum you can connect is 16 but you have in your project is 14 so you are good with indoor units connectable indoor unit and good with the capacity code of indoor unit so you are going to select this 10 horsepower system I will explain you now with one example let's say we have this uh, system and uh, we have how many indoor units we have over here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so number of indoor units we have 13 in our project and uh, this is the capacity code of each indoor unit 0 0.8 0 0.8 capacity code as I told you this is horsepower of system so total horsepower or capacity code over here is 4.8 and over here total capacity code is 5.6 so 4.8, 5.6, total 10.4 is the capacity code of your indoor units. You can see total capacity code of indoor units is 10.4. So now we have to select this outdoor unit. Uh, I will show you how this 8 horsepower outdoor unit we have selected over here. Uh, you need to keep in mind the number of connectable indoor units we have over here. That is 13. And the total capacity code of the indoor unit is 10.4. So now we are going to select this outdoor unit as you can see that capacity code of the indoor unit which we have in our project is 10.4 that lies between 4 to 10.8 that's okay and the maximum number of connectable indoor units are 13 here and we have in project also 13 so corresponding horsepower of the outdoor unit is 8 HP so we are going to select this model if we need only cooling then we are going to select this model if we need both heating and cooling then we are going to select this model and so this is how we have selected this 8 horsepower system now I will explain one more example to make you more clear let's take an example of this system as you can see that uh, how many indoor units we have over here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 16 24 32 so we have uh, number of uh, uh, indoor units are 32 over here and the capacity code here 13.25 sum of all indoor units 13.25 13.25 so 13.25 that is 13.25 26.5 26.5, 13.25, 39.75 and 39.75 plus 14 that is 53.75 so total capacity code of the indoor units in, one, in our project is 53.75 and the indoor units which we use in our project is 32 so now we will select outdoor unit based on number of indoor units 32 and capacity code of 53.75 so how we how did we get this 40 horsepower system again we will move back to our combined outdoor units model so capacity code remember that capacity code is 53.75 and uh, number of connectable indoor units on pro in our project is 32 so 53.75 is the capacity code of indoor unit so we have 53.75 so 53.75 lies between 20 and 54 so 20 and 54 we will select here and maximum number of indoor units 48 and in our project 32 so we are good with both things so we can select this 40 horsepower outdoor unit for our system 
if uh, heating is required then we will select uh, heating and cooling both required we will select this model if cooling only then we will select this model so now I have to explain one more thing this 40 horsepower is a combined outdoor unit model divided into three different uh, outdoor units so just go to let's say we going to select MMY AP40 4014 HT8 model cooling and heating uh, model heat pump model MMY AP4014 HT8 move back to our first table for the outdoor units so as you can see that this is the 40 horsepower and the model which we have selected is this one uh, MMY AP4014 HT8 and you can see that uh, number of combined outdoor units are 3 here with one 16 horsepower second 12 horsepower and third is 12 horsepower so we have 3 outdoor units available here with 40 horsepower system so this is how we have selected this uh, 3 outdoor units for 40 horsepower system as you can see that 40 horsepower system we have 3 outdoor units 16 12 12 and make sure you will have this uh, 16 horsepower outdoor unit comes first and this act as header and the other two act as follower because uh, the outdoor unit connected to the nearest indoor unit will act as header and the other two act as follower and its capacity should be more than this and this capacity should be more than this although these are same so it's okay any one of them can be connected but if it is 14 this is 12 this 14 comes first 12 comes later so you need to arrange them according to their capacity order so this is how you can select your machines based on your uh, number of indoor units and the capacity code of the indoor unit so this is how you can select your indoor units and outdoor units based on your heat load calculations and everything so one more thing I have to explain over here that is remote control for the VRF system as you can see uh, the different types of remote controllers available it could be a wired it could be wireless or it could be a central remote controller so depending upon the type of application and number of zones you can select this remote controller for your system so uh, in my next video I will explain you guys the third part of VRF system design basics that is uh, related to VRF system design and selection using excel sheet so we will gonna do one example uh, uh, as I have an excel sheet over here so we are gonna do one example to select our indoor units and outdoor units and based on this selection we are gonna do our judgmental result whether we have selected the correct capacity of the outdoor unit and indoor unit or not so next video will be related to designing and selection of your system using excel sheet so there I have prepared an excel sheet in which I will show you guys how you can select your indoor units and outdoor unit based on your air conditioning load uh, whether it is cooling or heating load so we will see how we will select indoor and outdoor units so there are different uh, steps which we have to follow in order to finish the selection and in the end we will check uh, whether the machines which we have selected over here justify our heating and cooling load or not so let's start uh, we will start with uh, one example uh, as you can see this is the system I am going to discuss with you guys so let's suppose uh, we have uh, 11 zones over here in our system on the ground floor uh, as you can see the spaces over here office meeting room locker room and different spaces over here and uh, the load which we have calculated over here is also given 
uh, you, you know that how to calculate the load using HAP software and using E20 sheet so using this process you can calculate the heating and cooling load so let's say this is the heat cooling load which we have calculated and heating load for our spaces so total cooling load is 51.4 kilowatt for all the spaces and uh, total heating load is 52 kilowatt for all the spaces so we are going to select the indoor unit for each space so before starting the selection of indoor unit uh, we need to know the indoor design conditions so uh, for when cooling uh, indoor temperature is 27 degrees centigrade dry bulb and uh, uh, wet bulb is 19 degree celsius and uh, when heating indoor temperature will be 20 degree dry bulb and the uh, outdoor temperature conditions let's suppose we are working uh, on the location where outdoor temperature when cooling is required is 35 degree dry bulb and uh, in the same place uh, when heating is required the outdoor temperature of that location is uh, 6 degree dry bulb when heating is required and 3 degree wet bulb and uh, two more things which we have to use over here as input uh, let's suppose the equivalent length of the piping is refrigerant piping is uh, 46 meter we have used over here because we have to use this in our selection and calculation and the height of the outdoor unit so the height of the out outdoor unit to the outdoor unit to indoor unit is uh, we have used uh, 20 meter over here we will gonna use this uh, height also in our selection and calculation so these are just input parameters uh, we know the location so according to the location we have selected the outdoor uh, temperature that is 35 degree driver and uh, for when cooling is required when heating is required this is the temperature so <coughs> first step you have to select the standard capacity uh, based on your air conditioning loads so this uh, standard capacity which we are going to select over here uh, I want to tell you one thing this is a preliminary selection not a final selection of the indoor unit final selection we will do over here this is the corrected capacity of all indoor units cooling or heating this is our final selection so this is just a preliminary selection of indoor units so we are going to select uh, the machine for this uh, office space having a cooling load of 6 kilowatt and heating load of 6.2 kilowatt so let's move to indoor unit models over here uh, we have a 6 kilowatt for cooling and 6.2 kilowatt for heating over here so this is all the indoor unit models over here let's say I'm going to use uh, four way air discharge cassette type so our loads are 6.0 for cooling and 6.2 for heating so 6.0 for cooling and 6.2 for heating so if we are going to select this one this will satisfy the heating capacity but this machine will not gonna satisfy the cooling capacity so we cannot select this machine so we are going for this machine with the cooling capacity 7.1 and heating capacity 8 so this is the model of this unit MMU AP0242H this capacity which we are going to select for the machine should be higher than our air conditioning loads for both heating and cooling so as you can see that 7.1 is greater than 6 and 8 is greater than 6.2 so we are going to select this A24 type MMU AP 024 2H so this machine we have used over here as you know that uh, the cooling which we have selected over here is 7.1 and heating is 8 kilowatt so 7.1 and 8 kilowatt which we have selected over here so in the same way you have to select for all the rooms over here uh, let me give you another example say for restroom our cooling load is 4.6 and heating load is 4.8 4.6 and 4.8 as you can see over here again heating load capacity it's okay 
but cooling is not okay so we are we cannot select this machine we have to go for higher uh, load uh, our uh, standard capacity of the machine should be higher than our calculated heating and cooling load so we are going to select this machine because uh, 5.6 is higher than 4.6 and uh, 4.8 for heating so we are going to select this machine MMU AP018 2H that is 18 type 18 type means 18,000 BTUs this is the capacity rank I already explained you about the capacity code and capacity rank in my uh, second video part 2 capacity code is basically the horsepower of this machine and capacity rank is BTUs 18,000 BTUs so we are going to select MMU AP0182H so this is the machine which we have select and uh, the load of this machine is 5.6 for cooling 6.3 for heating so in the same way you have to calculate for all uh, room, all rooms cooling and heating loads and then you have to sum over here for all the loads for cooling and for heating also so now we will calculate the corrected capacity A for each space uh, so how you will gonna calculate this uh, corrected capacity A there is a formula which we have to use corrected capacity A is equal to standard capacity of uh, this space for cooling because we are here working on cooling over here so this standard capacity for cooling into temperature correction for the cooling that is one so now I am gonna show you or tell you how I how did I get this temperature correction factor for cooling and heating one so we are going to use this factor over here to calculate the corrected capacity A so I am gonna move to this PDF file and there we have some tables and charts which we have to use to calculate the temperature correction factors so this is for the cooling capacity calculation in the same way we, uh, we have uh, a chart and tables for heating capacity calculation so first I am going to show you for cooling capacity calculation this correction chart which we are going to use uh, in the uh, beginning we have assumed that the indoor condition which we have used uh, is 27 degree dry bulb and 19 degree wet bulb so we are going to use this uh, when cooling is required so we are going to use this uh, indoor temperature condition when cooling is required 19 degree wet bulb so as you can see over there x axis we have indoor wet bulb temperature for cooling and y axis we have a capacity correction value so as you see that uh, our uh, for cooling our wet bulb temperature for indoor design condition is 19 degree wet bulb so 19 degree wet bulb this is 15 16 17 18 19 this will be 19 so all the way up over here when it touch over here go to the left side so what is the correction factor over here for this capacity is 1 so that's how uh, I got this uh, 1 if you have a different temperature like uh, if you have a 16 or 17 let's say 17 so go over here 15 16 17 17 touch over here then it will be around 0.94 something like this so in our case we have 19 degree wet bulb for indoor uh, design conditions so all the way up 19 and then move to the left side we have 1 degree uh, our uh, correction temperature is 1 so that's how I got this uh, 1 over here for cooling so I'm gonna show you for heating also how did I get 1 so uh, move to our heating chart heating capacity yeah, over here as you can see over here this is our correction chart for the heating capacity calculation so uh, over here you can see that uh, when heating is required our indoor design temperature condition is uh, 20 degree dry bulb so we have to use this one in the chart 20 degree dry bulb when heating is required as you can see that x axis we have uh, indoor dry bulb temperature and y axis we have capacity correction so we have a 20 degree dry bulb 
indoor driver so all the way up here and move to the left side one so again you can see over here we have uh, temperature correction factor for heating capacity calculation is one so that's how I got one over here for heating conditions so this is how we got this temperature correction so using this temperature correction in our excel sheet as I told you about the formula uh, for uh, calculating the corrected capacity A you just need to multiply the standard capacity with this temperature correction so in the same way you can calculate the corrected capacity A for heating conditions same formula which we have used over here but for heating of this standard capacity so heating of this standard capacity of this particular space multiply this heating factor which we have calculated over here that is 1 so this is how you can calculate the corrected capacity A for indoor units so in the end you have to sum up for cooling over here and you have to sum up for heating over here and why we have sum up of here because uh, on this basis we have to uh, select our outdoor unit so now we are going to select uh, our outdoor unit and uh, there is a note again this is a preliminary selection of outdoor unit which we are going to do over here final selection will do later so this is just a preliminary just like the indoor unit so as you know that the uh, load which we have calculated for corrected capacity A the sum which we have calculated here is 61.3 kilowatt and for heating it is 68.9 kilowatt so preliminary selection of outdoor unit it is basically the standard capacity no less than the total value of the corrected capacity A for heating and for cooling at the same time we have to check both connectable indoor unit numbers and outdoor unit diversity so we are going to select uh, this uh, outdoor unit based on over this corrected capacity sum for cooling and heating so let's say we have calculated over 61.3 kilowatt for cooling and 68.9 kilowatt for heating so move to our outdoor unit models over here how much we have calculated here 61.3 and 68.9 as you can see over here 22 horsepower unit which is a combined unit of two models that is 2214 HT8 and 2214T8 that is 10 horsepower and 12 horsepower two outdoor units so it's a combination of two outdoor units so as you can see the cooling capacity for uh, this model is 61.5 and heating is 69 kilowatt so our calculated corrected capacity 61.3 for cooling and here is 61.5 so 61.5 is greater than 61.3 so we are safe and for heating as you can see for the same unit heating is 69 kilowatt and one which we have calculated here is 68.9 kilowatt so both are greater both heating and cooling for this unit is greater the one which we have selected so model is this one MMY AP 2214 HT8 so this model which we have selected over here the standard model of 22 horsepower as you can see this is 22 horsepower model with cooling 61.5 and heating 69 so this is how we we did the preliminary selection of outdoor unit with cooling 61.5 kilowatt and heating 69 kilowatt so this is how we uh, did the selection now we move to another step that is corrected capacity B for cooling and heating same way we will calculate for cooling and heating so uh, as you remember for corrected capacity A we have used this indoor correction temperature for cooling and heating for corrected capacity A but in corrected capacity B we are going to use this piping correction factors for both cooling and heating as you can see the formula over here 
corrected capacity B is equal to corrected capacity A for cooling multiply by this piping correction factor for cooling in the same way corrected capacity B for heating will be corrected capacity A for heating for this particular space multiply by this uh, heating uh, heating piping correction factor so now I'm gonna tell you how did I get this 0.92 piping correction factor for cooling and 0.97 piping correction factor for heating so if you know these piping correction factors it's easy just need to multiply and you will get this corrected capacity B for each indoor unit so let's go back to our charts over here this is for cooling as you see over here for cooling the piping correction factor is 0.92 and this is all the charts for cooling capacity calculation so as you know that the outdoor unit model which we have selected here is uh, 22 horsepower outdoor unit model so 22 horsepower model will be here and the standard model we have selected for this one so according to this uh, outdoor unit model which graph we have to use for the piping correction that is A2 so these are the graphs this is A1 for outdoor unit model this is A2 for outdoor unit model and this is for cooling capacity correction so we are going to use this A2 graph so according to this A2 graph uh, which we have on the x-axis we have a piping length equivalent length in meter on the x-axis y axis we have the out height of the outdoor unit as you know that we already know the equivalent pipe length of our project is 46 meter and height of the outdoor unit that is from our indoor unit to the outdoor unit height is 20 meters so length 46 and height 20 and chart we already know that we have to use A2 chart across this 22 horsepower outdoor unit standard model so 46 is our uh, equivalent length over here must be somewhere here Go over here and uh, 20 is the height 20 is the height so it will be somewhere in between 90 and 92 so this is how we have used this uh, correction factor 92 for cooling 0.92 that is 92 percent over here on the x axis that is 46 meet 46 meter go up and 20 is the height so it will cross somewhere here so it will be like uh, 92 percent so it's 0.92 so this is how we have uh, calculated this piping correction factor for cooling that is 0.92 now we are going to calculate this uh, piping correction factor for heating so go to our heating capacity calculation charts and uh, this is the graph which we have to use as you see that for heating there is only one graph yeah there is only one graph which we have to use for all the outdoor units from 8 to 48 horsepower it's only one graph so same condition equivalent length is 46 meter height of the outdoor unit to the indoor unit is 20 meter between indoor unit and outdoor unit height is 20 meter so 46 and 20 so as you can and this is the equivalent length as you can see over here to the furthest indoor unit outdoor unit to the furthest indoor unit it's like this and the height you can see over here so this is the graph we are going to use 46 must be somewhere here go up all the way here till 20 so it's going to touch somewhere here 97 percent so it will be 0.97 so this is how we have used 0.97 piping correction factor for heating 
so this is how you have to calculate this uh, correction factors depending on your piping equivalent length and the height between outdoor and indoor unit so you just need to multiply this cooling capacity corrected A with this correction factor for cooling to get this corrected capacity B for this particular space same way you have to calculate the corrected capacity B you need to multiply this corrected capacity A with this uh, heating piping correction factor 0.97 so in the end you have to sum up corrected capacity B over here and for cooling and for heating also you have to sum up over here and make sure that the corrected capacity B which you have calculated over here for cooling and heating that should be greater than your air conditioning load for each space it should be greater than your air conditioning load for each space so if it is not like this any one of this is less than your air conditioning load for heating and cooling what you have to do you need to increase the indoor unit capacity so stand capacity you have to increase again and then you have to calculate again so make sure that these uh, values should be higher than this air conditioning load and uh, one more thing which I should have told you when I was doing the preliminary selection of outdoor unit when you are doing the preliminary selection of outdoor unit at the same time you have to check few more factors so one of the factor is uh, as you can see this is the example which we are working so you can see that 11 units over here indoor units 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so and the unit outdoor unit which we have selected is of 22 horsepower system and this is based on two outdoor units one with 12 horsepower and second is 10 horsepower as we already see over here 22 horsepower is subdivided as two units that is 12 horsepower and 10 horsepower and the number of so thing which i have i should have told you before is the number of connectable indoor units this should be checked at the same time when you are doing the preliminary selection of outdoor unit as you can see for this model maximum number of connectable indoor units are 37 and in our system we have total 11 you see over here we have total number of indoor units are 11 and the capacity code over here this is 12.5 for these 5 units and this 6 unit is 9.5 so total is 21.95 so total capacity is 21.95 and number of indoor units are 11 so as you see that the number of indoor units in our system over here should be less than this model which we have selected over here so this is 37 and our system is 11 so we are good so if it is more than you cannot select this system you have to go for another unit uh, also one more thing uh, I have to tell you about the outdoor unit diversity so as you uh, or I will discuss it later when I when the when this uh, when we do the selection of outdoor and indoor unit as you know that we did the preliminary selection over here now over here we will do the actual selection of our outdoor units and indoor units so same time I'm gonna discuss this outdoor unit diversity factor and one of the friend he asked me what is uh, diversity outdoor unit diversity so I'm gonna explain it over here so now we are going to calculate the corrected capacity of the outdoor units and indoor units or the actual capacity corrected capacity of outdoor units so the formula which we are going to use over here is as you can see that is a corrected capacity of the outdoor unit for heating and for cooling for cooling and heating so as you can see that this is the final corrected capacity of the outdoor unit for cooling and for heating the formula which we are going to use for cooling is uh, we need to multi as you know that the preliminary selection uh, of the outdoor unit cooling which we have calculated is uh, 61.5 and the heating of the outdoor unit preliminary selection is 69 
so this is the same value which we have used as this is the standard capacity of the outdoor unit or with the preliminary selection so these four factors which we have to use to calculate the corrected capacity of the outdoor unit indoor temperature correction factor outdoor temperature correction factor connecting piping largest length and the highest uh, largest length and the longest height which we have to use over here this is uh, and outdoor unit diversity so we need to multiply these four factors with the standard capacity to get the corrected capacity of the outdoor unit for cooling in the same way we need to multiply these four factors with corrected capacity preliminary selection corrected capacity for heating of the outdoor unit standard capacity with these four factors to get the final corrected capacity of our outdoor unit for heating so standard capacity you know that for outdoor unit 61.5 and 69 preliminary selection and uh, temperature correction factors as you know that i already told you about the temperature correction factors and these are indoor temperature correction factors we have used over here one and one we already calculated it before so that's how i write cooling one heating one and uh, outdoor temperature i will tell you later first let me tell you about this uh, connecting piping length and the lift factors so this is also we uh, know that equivalent piping length largest piping length is 46 meter in our system 46 meter largest length and the uh, height from outdoor unit to indoor unit is 20 meter so this is uh, length and the lift length is 46 and the lift is 20 we already write over here so the correction factors for piping correction piping correction for cooling we already calculated when we use uh, this one in our corrected capacity we know that for cooling it's 0.92 for heating it's 0.97 so we already write over here 0.92 for cooling 0.97 for heating so now i'm going to tell you about the outdoor temperature correction factors for cooling and heating how did we get one and how did we get 0.95 so let's focus on cooling first outdoor temperature correction for cooling as you know that outdoor temperature correction of the location on which we are working on is 35 degree dry bulb so move back to our chart you know that this is the capacity correction charts and our outdoor temperature is 35 degree dry bulb when cooling is required so this is the chart we are going to use outdoor air dry bulb temperature versus capacity correction for cooling so x axis we have uh, dry bulb outdoor dry bulb and y axis we have capacity correction values so our outdoor dry bulb is 35 so you can see over here so 35 go up move to the left side when it touches this line move to the left side one so our capacity correction factor is 1 for cooling due to the outdoor air dry bulb temperature so you see this is how we got outdoor air dry bulb temperature correction factor is 1 for cooling now for heating how did we get 0.95 this one also i will tell you go for heating yeah this one correction chart for heating capacity calculation as you know that for the location in which we are working when heating is required 6 degree dry bulb and 3 degree wet bulb so 3 degree wet bulb temperature is uh, for 35 degree outdoor dry bulb temperature cooling so now for heating we have uh, wet bulb temperature uh, outdoor wet bulb temperature for heating will be 3 degree wet bulb temperature wet bulb so this is our this is our outdoor air wet bulb temperature on x axis y axis we have capacity correction so this is a outdoor air wet bulb versus capacity correction so our outdoor air wet bulb is 3 degree wet bulb so this is we have to use this is minus 5 this is 0 this is 5 so 3 will be somewhere here 
go up over here touch over here and move to the left side somewhere between 0.9 and 1 so it will be around 0.95 so capacity correction for heating due to the outdoor air wet bulb temperature is 0.95 so this is how we got this 0.95 over here this is the correction for heating so the only thing left over here now is outdoor unit diversity so what is outdoor unit diversity outdoor unit diversity is uh, basically it is the ratio of connected indoor unit to the outdoor unit horsepower as you can see in our example we have uh, connected indoor units this is the sum of these five indoor units that is 12.5 and this is the sum of these six uh, indoor units so how much it is that is uh, 12.45 plus 9.45 so indoor unit horsepower is around 21.9 that's we already uh, write over here that is 21.95 for indoor unit and the outdoor unit which we have selected over here is 22 horsepower so it is basically the ratio of uh, horsepower indoor unit to the outdoor unit horsepower so this 21.9 divided by 22 that is 99.5 is approximately 100 percent so move back to our chart this is the outdoor unit diversity as you can see that this is x axis we have a standard capacity ratio indoor units total capacity ratio and this is the correction factors in our case it is 100 percent and this this chart is for cooling so 100 percent go up to the left side you have one so correction is one and for if you go for heating as you can see this is for heating it will be same so standard capacity on x axis uh, ratio for indoor to outdoor unit is 100% which we already see in our example so 100% go up again it's 1 so this is how we have used this outdoor unit diversity 1 for cooling and 1 for heating so outdoor uh, unit diversity is basically the ratio of connected indoor unit to the outdoor unit percentage so in our case it is 21.95 divided by 22 that is almost 100 percent that's why we have used uh, one one correction factors so as we know all of these uh, factors for cooling and for heating we just need to multiply these correction factors with uh, preliminary selection of this standard capacity of the outdoor unit for cooling and for heating so this is how we get this uh, corrected capacity of the outdoor unit that is 56 kilowatt this is the corrected capacity of outdoor unit for cooling and for heating we got uh, 63.58 kilowatt so now we have to calculate uh, the corrected capacity c for all indoor unit before that it was a preliminary selection now this is the final selection or corrected capacity c outdoor unit we already calculate corrected capacity so now we are going to do for indoor units based on our outdoor unit corrected capacity so how we are going to calculate this corrected capacity c corrected capacity c as you can see from this formula uh, corrected capacity c for this space is uh, corrected capacity of the outdoor unit that is 56.58 into f7 and this is F7 divided into uh, standard capacity of this indoor unit divided by total standard capacity of uh, all the indoor units so this is how you can calculate the corrected capacity C of uh, indoor unit for cooling and for heating in the same way you can calculate you can see the corrected capacity of this outdoor unit which we have calculated is 63.58 kilowatt 
so corrected capacity C for this space for heating is this F37 this is F37 that is 63.58 so this corrected capacity C for heating this sum into this is uh, standard capacity for this space divided by total capacity of all the spaces so this is how you can calculate the corrected capacity C all the formulas are applied here so uh, this is how you can calculate uh, the corrected capacity C of all indoor units so in the end what you have to do uh, this is your air conditioning load same as above and these are all the models which we have used for indoor units and this is the same corrected capacity C for cooling and for heating so these are the same values which we have to write over here and this is the sum of uh, corrected capacity C and uh, for cooling and for heating and this is same as this one which we have calculated for uh, corrected capacity of the outdoor unit so this is our final selection or corrected capacity for the outdoor unit so we have to select this model with corrected capacity of the outdoor unit for cooling is 56.6 so we are going to select the machine with the uh, cooling capacity required is 56.6 and heating capacity required is 63.6 for heating for the outdoor unit model and this is the individual uh, indoor unit models for all the spaces and uh, make sure that the corrected capacity C which we have calculated here here for cooling and for heating this should be greater than your calculated air conditioning load if this condition is satisfied then I have uh, I applied the formula here if this condition is satisfied then it will be ok for each unit for heating and cooling if this condition is not satisfied and your either heating or cooling load for corrected capacity C of each indoor unit is less than your air conditioning load then it will not be okay uh, let's say I'm gonna decrease uh, to show you an example let's say this is 2.8 as you see over here the uh, air conditioning load is 3 but corrected capacity is 2.8 that's why it's not okay if it is like this you need to increase the outdoor unit capacity and then you have to calculate again the corrected capacity of this indoor unit to satisfy this condition so make sure that your heating and cooling load which you have calculated here capacity C should be greater than your air conditioning load for each room so this is how you can select your outdoor and indoor unit model based on your uh, air conditioning load for heating and cooling so it depends on your uh, outdoor temperature condition on your location in which you are working so according to that you have to write these temperature conditions and you have to calculate this correction factors for heating cooling discuss part 4 that is related to VRF system designing and selection using VRF selection tool software so there I have the main screen of the VRF system selection tool software and uh, here in the excel sheet as you can see that uh, we are going to use these loads to design our VRF uh, system uh, this is the cooling load and this is the heating load for all the spaces mentioned over here so total cooling load is 51.4 kilowatt and total heating load is 52 kilowatt and uh, these are the outdoor design conditions which we are going to use when we design our system so let's move back to our VRF uh, selection tool software but uh, before starting this VRF selection tool software uh, let me show you one thing over here uh, this is the flow chart of the selection tool software which we are, uh, which you have to understand over here uh, basically we start or create the project first and then we select the method 
basically two types of methods are available here in this VRF selection tool software uh, one is a wizard type selection that is detail design method and the other one is drag and drop drawing method so in uh, wizard type selection we select and set indoor after uh, adding this outdoor temperature information we will select or set indoor units in the wizard type selection so after selecting our indoor units we will move to the next tab that is related to selection of outdoor units so when you finish the selection of outdoor unit you will link them indoor and outdoor unit you have to link them and then uh, you have to create the piping will be created automatically depending on your indoor and outdoor unit capacity but in drag and drop drawing method you will create the refrigerant piping first and then you will select or set your indoor units and then you will move to the next tab and select your outdoor units so in the end uh, you will select the central control device and then you will create the output project of your data so only difference between these two method is uh, here you will select first indoor unit outdoor unit then link them and then I have piping diagram will be automatically created but in drag and drop rank first piping diagram efficient piping diagram you have to create then set your indoor and outdoor unit so today I'm gonna discuss this uh, drag and drop rank method to create our system later we will discuss about this wizard type selection so let's move back to our selection tool software over here so as you can see that this is the main screen of our VRF selection tool software and the different options available over here first you have to create the project so in order to create the project you can either click here that is uh, create project or you can go to edit this option here that is create project so we'll create project first and this screen will appear and then you have to uh, give the information over here so let's say I'm going the project number as 111 and uh, project name whatever the project name you have to specify here and uh, customer name maybe like CC and uh, make sure that all the entries with the star it's necessary to fill up other entries it's up to you whether you want to fill or not it's up to you but when you start your project you have to fill all of them so and then you can also give the address you you can specify the installer whoever the installer you can specify the name or company name you can specify the installation date let's say it's 31st uh, or 28 February and commissioning date let's say it's uh, 28 March whatever the date you can select over here so after selecting everything you just have to save here and if you want to edit your project data again so you just uh, select your project over here and then go over here this is the edit project or you can go over here edit and then edit project so you can uh, edit the entries once again once this window is open so once this step is finished creating your project or editing is finished you can either double click this one just select the project and double click to move to the next step or you can select from here also this is the next step or go edit and go to the next step so I'm going to the next step by double clicking once you double click this one and uh, it will ask you about the method which method you want to use you know that uh, the method which I told you one is a wizard type selection other is a drag and drop drawing method first one is a wizard type selection second is drag and drop today I'm gonna discuss drag and drop drawing so I'm gonna select this one and then I will sele uh, select this next button or you can go to edit and next button so I'm gonna select this next step once you select the next step then this new window will appear here you have to give the outdoor information outdoor temperature information over here remember that I talked to you about the location in which I'm working right now the outdoor design temperature conditions are this one for cooling and for heating 
so move back to our software and I will click outdoor temperature information So, in all location, outdoor cooling driver temperature is 107. So, I'm gonna select 107 cooling driver temperature and heating wet bulb temperature is 37.7. So, 37.7. So, once you select these uh, temperatures, cooling dry bulb and heating wet bulb, you can save it and then exit here. So after selecting your outdoor temperatures, you have to go to here. That's uh, new. New means you will create a new refrigerant piping diagram over here. Or you can go here also uh, in the edit tab and you can select new. So I'm going to select new to create a new piping refrigerant piping diagram. So I will select here new. Once you select new, this window will appear. As you can see on the left side, all different types of indoor units are available in this software which we are going to use and uh, branches are also available whether we want to use a Y-shaped branching joint, we want to use 4 branching header, we want to use 8 branching header. So there are different types of uh, indoor units are available here and outdoor model as you can see you can select from here also or when you will double click this outdoor unit then you can select your outdoor unit as you can see this is our outdoor unit in the refrigerant piping diagram and this is our indoor units but these are dummy units we will have to select the indoor unit from here and then drag on to, uh, into the uh, dummy units but before starting this refrigerant piping diagram let's move back to our excel sheet so as you can see that based on our excel sheet load calculation heating and cooling we will select our indoor units so first uh, I am gonna draw the piping diagram first as you can see that we have a total 11 indoor units here in our system so I have to use 11 indoor units over here so let me create this uh, piping diagram first so I'm gonna use uh, this Y-shaped branching joint and uh, four branching header combination in my refrigerant piping diagram. So I have to use 11 indoor units first. So let me create this uh, <coughs> Y branching here also. When you click this dummy unit and right click on this one, there's option insert. You can insert Y-shaped branching joint, four branching header or Y eight branching header. So I'm gonna use Y branching header here one. So now I have three indoor unit depending on what type of configuration you are going to use. So according to your, uh, uh, you can select a Y shape branching header or you can select a uh, four branching header or eight branching header. So I'm gonna use one more Y branching he joint here and one more here and then again I'm gonna use uh, Y branching joint here and one more Y branching here one more Y branching here and then uh, I will use uh, one four branching header here so how many indoor units I have now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so I have now I have created my refrigerant piping diagram and I have eleven indoor units available here in my refrigerant piping diagram system VRF system so now I am going to use the indoor units based on my load calculation cooling and heating load so <coughs> first uh, move back to our software uh, let's suppose I'm gonna use this uh, for this office which has 6 kilowatt cooling load and 6.2 kilowatt heating load office 1 
I'm gonna use this uh, four way a discharge cassette type unit you just need to select and drag over here and then leave it so your indoor machine will automatically come over here as you can see that there are different models available here you can select from them also like slim duct type concealed duct high static pressure type or one way air discharge high wall two series four series so whatever you want you can select the indoor unit from here so i'm gonna use this four way air discharge cassette type unit and the indoor unit name which i'm going to use uh, here is uh, vrf1 and uh, space name as you can see the office one so i'm gonna name it office one and floor we have a ground floor there so it's gf and uh, there you have uh, one option that is indoor unit selection method if you will select this auto then it will gonna select your uh, capacity rank of the machine which is basically the horsepower of the machine based on our uh, calculated load if you will uncheck this one you can select the machine from uh, all the models available over here so I'm gonna use this auto method over here and the indoor design condition which I'm gonna use over here indoor cooling drabble I'm gonna use is 75 that's okay that is 23.8 degrees uh, Celsius and indoor wet bulb temperature that is automatically calculated when I will give the humidity value uh, uh, the humidity value which I'm going to use here is 50% for design for indoor design comfort it is recommended to have 50% relative humidity as you see that if I change this to 40 our cooling wet bulb temperature will be changed so I'm gonna use this 50 uh, as per design recommendation so I'm gonna use 50 so wet bulb over here 62.6 .6 degrees for my and the indoor heating uh, dry bulb temperature I'm gonna use over here is uh, 70 degrees for night and now I'm have to mention my cooling and heating load so cooling load I'm gonna mention over here now that is uh, 6 kilowatt so I'm gonna use uh, 6 kilowatt here and sensible let's say our sensible is uh, 4.6 and uh, what is our heating load over here that is 6.2 kilowatt for office one so I'm gonna use 6.2 kilowatt here so as you can see that based on our these loads 6 and 6.2 this machine is automatically selected based, based on our uh, uh, heating and cooling loads so now I have to give the piping length from the joint equivalent so from this joint to the machine I have to mention the pipe length so let's suppose we have uh, this length is we have to mention equivalent and actual length let's say uh, our equivalent length is 2.8 meters and actual length is 2.5 meters and uh, we have to mention the height difference between indoor and outdoor units also let's say our outdoor unit is installed at the roof and the height uh, difference between our roof and the ground floor ceiling is uh, 4.5 meter whatever the uh, height is you have to mention here let's say it's 4.5 so I will mention 4.5 meter here so this uh, fan speed I'm gonna select is high okay I don't wanna use any heater here or okay so all input uh, are done so uh, once you select the machine and all inputs are done so you just need to save it if any input is missing it will give you some error so you need to specify that input so I'm gonna close this one and uh, now I'm gonna select the second machine over here so this time I'm gonna use what is the space here meeting room so meeting room uh, now I'm gonna use uh, this 
duct conceal duct standard type unit I'm going to use over here indoor unit so just drag and drop here once it's done in the same way you have to fill this uh, or give all the inputs let's uh, this is our meeting room and uh, room name is uh, oh this is uh, VRF2 and room name is meeting room and floor is ground floor I'm gonna select auto again these conditions are same only this I'm going to change so uh, this one you remember that I have used uh, the same condition for the first indoor unit same I'm going to use for the second indoor unit and the uh, loads for the meeting room are 4.6 kilowatt for cooling and 5 for heating 4.6 and 5 so 4.6 for cooling and 5 for heating let's say it sends its uh, sensible load is 3.9 and heating is 5 so now I have to specify the piping length from the joint equivalent so from this joint to the machine I have to specify the length let's say uh, I'm gonna use uh, equivalent is 2.8 and uh, actual 2.5 meter and height difference between indoor and outdoor units same 4.5 meter and then save it and then close it so now I'm going to use uh, the third I'm going to specify the third indoor unit for third space that is office 2 so this time I'm gonna use the same 4-way cassette type unit so instead of uh, again drag and drop here I'm gonna copy the same data y if you will just right click on this machine and copy and then here right click again and then paste so same data will be pasted here so I'm just gonna modify it just double click this machine I'm gonna select here VRF3 office space 2 ground floor auto selection and this 70 okay and what is our load here as you can see for office cooling 3.8 heating 3.3 3.8 3.3 so 3.8 kilowatt cooling let's say this is 3 and heating how much 3.3 3.3 so we have specified our heating and cooling loads and uh, now we have to specify the length again uh, let's say it's same 2.8 from here to here it's 2.8 equivalent we are going to use and 2.5 is actual we are going to use and height will same that is 4.5 meter so save this one and then close it so now I have to specify the fourth indoor unit for number four space that is locker room so this time I'm gonna use this uh, high wall type unit over here three series or seven series so I just have to drag and drop here into the dummy indoor unit and then uh, I'm gonna use its name as uh, VRF4 room name is locker room and uh, floor is ground floor and I'm gonna use the auto selection method over here same everything except this last one I'm gonna change to 70 heating travel temperature and now I have to specify the load locker room 1 it's uh, cooling 3 and heating 3.1 3 and 3.1 3 let's say the sensible is uh, 2.4 
and 3.1 is the heating load so 3 and 3.1 we have specified here and uh, now we have to specify this uh, length again so <coughs> let's say I'm gonna use uh, same 2.5 2.8 equivalent and 2.5 actual length and height difference again I'm gonna use same between indoor outdoor unit is 4.5 meter because this one is on the ground floor and our outdoor unit was on the first floor and this is locker room 1 here locker room 1 then after specifying all the inputs then save it and close it so now I'm gonna select one more indoor unit for our next phase that is uh, meeting room 2 <coughs> so let's say I'm gonna select uh, the same unit which I have used here standard duct type for meeting room 2 this is for meeting room 1 uh, we should mention this one as meeting room 1 save this one So instead of uh, drag and drop another, I want to copy the same data, I just added this one. So right click this one, copy this machine data and right click paste. So now I am going to edit the data for this uh, meeting room 2. So this VRF is 5, this is our VRF 5 and meeting room 2 same ground floor auto method uh, this is all ok and now we have to specify our loads let's say our cooling load is 11.8 kilowatt and heating is 12 11.8 kilowatt is uh, cooling and let's say our sensible is uh, 10 10.2 and uh, our heating load that is 12 kilowatt 12 kilowatt so I'm gonna use the same length from the joint to the machine joint to the machine that is 2.8 meter equivalent and actual 2.5 and this is 4.5 height between indoor and outdoor unit so just save it then close this tab so now I will input the data for another space that is locker room 2 so first locker room I have used this uh, uh, 3 series high side wall so I'm gonna copy the data from here and then paste here on this dummy indoor unit and then I will double click to uh, modify the data this is our VRF 6 and locker room 2 ground floor auto selection method and now I have to add the dead cooling and heating load so cooling load is 3 and heating load is 3 both are 3 kilowatt so 3 let's say this is 2.4 and this is also 3 so cooling is 3 kilowatt, heating is 2 kilowatt and same piping length I'm gonna use from this joint to this machine equivalent and same actual and uh, height between indoor and outdoor unit it's same 4.5 I'm gonna use save and then close this one so one more indoor unit for next space that is our rest room so for restroom I am gonna use uh, this uh, 4 way cassette type I will copy the data and then I will paste here then double click this one to edit the data and this would be our VRF7 uh, and it's 
room is a uh, restroom so on the ground floor auto selection method we are going to use and uh, its cooling load is 4.6 heating is 4.8 4.6 0.8 and let's say our sensible is uh, 3.6 here 6.5 so this is our cooling 4.6 and heating is 4.8 okay so the length pipe length from the joint from this joint to this machine is 2.8 equivalent and 2.5 actual So we can save this one. And then close it. So there are four more indoor units which we have to add over here. So what is our next space? That is smoking room. So I'm gonna use the cassette type here again. Copy the tab and paste on this dummy unit then double click to edit the data this is uh, our VRF 8 that's ok and this is our smoking room same ground floor auto selection method and we have to specify the loads 3 for heating and 3 for cooling and 3.1 for heating 3 and 3.1 so 3 3.1 and let's say sensible is 2.4 so we have specified and length so the length which I'm gonna use now from this uh, header 4 branching header till this machine is 2.8 equivalent and 2.5 actual and height is same because this is on the ground floor and our auto is on the roof so it's 4.5 meter so I'm gonna save it and then close it again I'm gonna so next space is uh, reception room so I'm gonna copy this data based on this dummy unit double click this indoor unit and uh, edit your data this VRF9 and this is our reception room so I'm gonna change this name to reception room reception room it's on the ground floor and uh, these conditions are same now I have to specify the loads let's say our cooling we have calculated is 3.8 heating is 3.9 3.8 and 3.9 so this is 3.8 and this is 3.9 and let's say our sensible is uh, 3 so now I have to specify the length from the joint so let's say the length from this joint to this machine is uh, 5.8 equivalent and 5.5 for actual so I'm gonna use 5.8 equivalent and 5.5 actual so this height is same and save the data then close it then move to the next uh, space that is office 3 space with the cooling load is 4.8 and heating load is 4.5 so uh, I'm gonna copy this data from office 2 over here paste
and double click the indoor unit this will be our VRF tent and this is our office 3 ground floor and then we have to specify the cooling and heating loads cooling is 4.8 heating is 4.5 4.8 and heating is 4.5 let's say our sensible is uh, 3 sensible cooling load is 3.8 so now i have to specify the piping length from the joint so let's say from this joint to this machine the equivalent piping length is 8.8 .8 meters and uh, actually is 8.5 meters and then save it and close this one so now the last page is here that is reception area so I'm gonna use standard duct type here for reception area so I'm gonna copy this data and uh, paste over here then I'm gonna double click this indoor unit to modify the data this is VRF 11 and this is for reception area it's on the ground floor auto selection method so capacity for cooling is 3 and heating is 3.1 which is 3 for cooling 3.1 for heating so sensible cooling I'm gonna use let's say it's 2.45 and uh, again I have to specify the piping length from the joint equivalent and the actual so let's say the length of this piping from uh, our A4 branching header to this machine is uh, 11.8 equivalent and the actual I'm gonna use here is 11.5 and this is 4.5 meter then save this machine data and then close it so now all the indoor units data has been specified now we're gonna move to our outdoor units as you can see that since we have uh, specified all the capacities for our indoor units so based on our indoor units capacities outdoor unit is automatically selected over here and the unit which is selected here is MMY AP2416 HT8P that is 24 horsepower system is selected based on our load calculation for all indoor units so if you will you wanna modify the data or edit the data you just double click uh, outdoor unit so the unit type which I'm gonna select over here is SMMSE there are different series available here in Toshiba so I'm gonna select this SMMSE since I have checked this auto that's why this machine is selected based on my indoor unit uh, capacities or load calculation so uh, and this maximum selection percentage which I have selected here is uh, 100% based on my indoor and outdoor unit capacity ratios so there are few more things I have to specify here that is the main piping length as you can see that this is zero right now so I have to specify this main piping length if you remember my first video I have told you uh, about the main piping of the refrigerant uh, VRF system the main piping length is from this T connection to the first branching section this is our main piping length over here as you can see so I have to specify this uh, main piping length actual and equivalent so let's say my main piping length uh, actual is uh, 6 meter and equivalent is 6.5 meter so I have used this length over here now I have to specify the T-shape outdoor unit uh, distance LA and LB 
as you see this is our outdoor units here this is first one and this is the second one so LA is the distance from outdoor unit till this uh, uh, pipe and uh, LB is the distance from here to this main pipe so this is LA and this is LB we have to specify these lengths so let's say uh, the LA actual which I, which I have used here is uh, let's say it is 2.2 uh, seven for L A and L B is also two point seven and uh, equivalent let's say it is three for L A and three for L B and uh, one more thing we have to specify here is the height difference between these two outdoor units. Since I want both of them on the same floor same level so I'm gonna use zero meter here if you have uh, height difference between them then you can specify that uh, difference in a meter over here also so since I'm gonna use both of them on the same floor so I have specified zero there's no height difference between these two outdoor units so after uh, editing this data you just save it and then exit this one so as you can see that we have specified this main piping length but there are few more uh, entries which we have to add over here so as you know that we have added this uh, pipe length represent piping length from this uh, wipe branching joint to the machine but we did not add the length from uh, branching joint to the branching joint as you can see it is zero here zero it is zero it is zero so we have specified this length but we did not specify this length so now I'm gonna specify the length between the uh, joints Y shape branching joints so I'm gonna select this uh, branching joint to specify the length between this joint and this joint so just double click this uh, Y branching joint and its name is Y2 so now I'm gonna mention uh, the actual length and equivalent length let's say our actual length is 2.7 meter here and equivalent length is 3 meter so okay so as you can see that uh, the lengths are mentioned here 2.7 and 3 so now I'm gonna specifying this length between two joints so I'm gonna select this joint and uh, let's say uh, the length which uh, I'm used here is 3.2 meter actual and 3.5 meter uh, equivalent so it's it, it will come here now I have to specify between this joint and this joint so let's say same I'm gonna use 3.2 and equivalent is 3.5 so whatever the, your lengths are here you have to specify here in your project and if you don't uh, uh, select these uh, uh, lengths then you will get an error why will you you will check your system information so let's say I, I will go over there as you can see that uh, this is uh, this is an error so we need to fix that one total pipe actual length is not mentioned it's zero meter pipe length exit exist so uh, when I mention when I specify all the lengths over there so this error will be gone so we need to specify all the lengths over here so now I have to specify the length between this joint and this joint right now it's zero so I'll select this one let's say the actual length is 6.2 and uh, equivalent is 6.5 for this Y5 joint so this length will appear here and now I will specify this this length from this joint to this joint just double click this joint Y6 
and uh, mention the length let's say actual is 2.7 and equivalent is 3 okay now between these two joints same uh, I'll suppose this 2.7 and this one is 3 Uh, now I have to specify the length uh, between uh, this Y branching joint and this uh, 4 branching header. So I have to specify the length. So let's say it's 2.7 actual length and uh, equivalent is 3. So it will appear here. Okay, so all other lengths are, I have already specified there. So this is how you have to specify all the refrigerant piping length. So as you can see that we have uh, uh, put all the information in our project and we have designed our VRF system based on our load calculations. And you can see this uh, dia is automatically calculated both for liquid and the gas piping based on our load calculations as you can see that uh, by specifying the length between the joints that is y shape branching joint and uh, all the joints we have specified the length before that the uh, outdoor unit capacity was uh, 24 but now it is 26 horsepower as you can see over here one outdoor unit 14 and the other one is 12 so total 26 horsepower so all these factors matter a lot while selecting your indoor and outdoor units um, uh, we specified the length over here between the joints so uh, this this is uh, 26 horsepower system of the outdoor unit that is uh, divided into 14 horsepower and 12 horsepower and this one is header and this one is follower if you remember I told you about the header and the follower header is that unit that is uh, nearest to the first branching section that's why this is called header and the other is called follower and they should be arranged in the capacity according to their capacity 14 horsepower should come first and 12 horsepower should come first uh, should come second sorry so this one comes first this is second this is header this is follower and if you want to study these uh, piping diameters and uh, lengths you can see the piping legend over here the first one is for the gas pipe diameter second liquid pipe diameter third is actual length fourth is equivalent length so this first one is gas pipe that is 7 by 8 inches second is liquid pipe diameter that is one by that is half inches and 2.7 meters the actual length and 3 meters the equivalent length so this is how you can study the legend for piping in the same way legends are mentioned here for outdoor units and indoor units so this is how you can design your VRF system based on your load calculation you have to uh, specify your load calculation for indoor units and using auto selection method you can select your indoor uh, you can select your outdoor units based on your indoor uh, load calculations and selection so in the last uh, I will but before that I will click the system information so if I click the system information uh, you can see that uh, this is the specification column and this one is a design column and this is the result column so make sure that all of them should be tick in the end if it is not tick then you need to correct that error so as you can see this is the design column and in our project this is basically the uh, limit from the supplier this SPEG specs or specification from the supplier this is the limit from the supplier so we need to uh, our design should be less than this specified limit because this is the limit so for example total piping length actual allowed by supplier is 300 meters in our case it's 80.3 so 80.3 is less than 300 that's why it's thick same over here 
maximum equivalent length of the outdoor unit connecting pipe is 10 is allowed maximum and we have 3 over here so we are good so as additional refrigerant charge amount that's uh, automatically calculated for our whole system is 14.76 additional uh, refrigerant amount is required to charge and uh, outdoor unit capacity is 26 as you see over here there is 26 horsepower 26 horsepower and uh, two outdoor units we have used 114 and the other 12 and indoor units are 11 we have used indoor unit capacity is 24.45 is the total capacity of the indoor units and indoor unit to the outdoor unit capacity ratio that is uh, outdoor unit diversity is 94% because indoor unit is 24.5 and outdoor unit is 26 so 24.5 divided by 26 outdoor unit diversity will be 94% so 94 uh, this is the design this is the allowed limit uh, that is 50 it should be between 50 to 135% and our is 94% so that's why it's good and uh, for this pipe equivalent length actual that is allowed from the supplier is 180 meters and in our case our project that is 34.5 meters so we are on the safe range so this is how you have to compare uh, your design with the limitations from the supplier so in the end uh, we will generate an output uh, from our project so you just need to click this uh, output over here or you can go to uh, edit and you can generate an output data also you will get the uh, electrical uh, results also here when we generate the report we will get the detailed design of this electrical so let's go to the output tab and select this one so whatever the things you need you can select and you can generate the output you can generate report, table, piping, wiring and price list everything so uh, whatever you need you just select this one if you need excel you can for all this you can select excel if you need cad you can select the cad if you need pdf you can select pdf so right now i'm gonna select uh, only pdf so now I, i'm gonna save uh, these reports tables and piping and wiring diagrams and we'll discuss the results let's say i'm gonna save here okay just to wait a moment it will take uh, maybe one minute once everything is saved there uh, i will discuss the results related to the vrf system design we will discuss the report table uh, piping and wiring diagrams and the price list also just to wait a little So in my next video I will discuss with you guys about the additional refrigerant charge calculation and uh, we'll also use uh, the other method for refrigerant piping uh, design over here for the VRF system that is uh, wizard type selection later in another video. Okay, it's done. So move here. Okay, these are all the PDF files which we have selected over there. So I'm gonna open this uh, first one, the piping diagram, refrigerant piping diagram for the VRF system, which we have designed there. So as you can see that this is the refrigerant piping diagram which we have uh, created over there so you can take a print of this refrigerant piping diagram because everything is mentioned here all inputs are there uh, load is mentioned there and uh, machine size is also mentioned there pipe sizes are mentioned liquid gas pipe size mentioned 
their lengths are mentioned what are the accessories used here y shape branching joints and their types are also mentioned for example this is rbmby105e and this is rbmby205e so let's go to piping and wiring diagram in the combined state so as you can see that this is our outdoor unit which we have selected for our system that is 26 horsepower system as you can see this is uh, blue one is the refrigerant piping over here and this red one is the electrical cabling here for from outdoor unit to the indoor units so as you can see that we have all the indoor units over here total 11 indoor units and uh, you can see that their uh, gas and liquid pipe sizing are mentioned there and the lengths are also mentioned there from this joint to this machine then this joint to this machine all lengths are mentioned there and uh, these lengths are also mentioned from uh, joint to joint lengths and uh, refrigerant piping dias are also mentioned for liquid and gas pipe and as you can see that electrical wiring for the cables their sizing is also available here so if you go over there you can see the outdoor unit name and its uh, capacity that is horsepower and uh, indoor unit co total capacity outdoor unit capacity everything is mentioned here and uh, how much is the additional refrigerant charge calculation is required for our project is 14.76 so this m this much uh, additional efficient is required for our project and if you go over there you can find the indoor and outdoor units and uh, accessories y shape joints header whatever we use in our project is mentioned here and their quantities are also mentioned here and this is uh, the wiring size and length for the electrical data over here you can see what kind of wire we can use it's mentioned here for the outdoor unit for the uh, indoor units and for remote controls everything is mentioned here their wiring labeling polarity their size length everything is mentioned here in our report and you can see the price list also here our project name everything is mentioned here then outdoor unit only one we have used and indoor units there are different types of indoor units and their quantities available whatever the price you can mention here and uh, outdoor unit uh, connection kit which we have used is this model only one quantity then y shape branching joint we have used these types this quantity and then header and then accessories so this is the pricing list which you can use and it's easy for you to order the equipments and accessories for your VRF system so also you have a uh, equipment list and you have a uh, report drawing so this is the same thing which we already discussed before the electrical wiring is there and refrigerant piping is there and you have a uh, equipment catalog for indoor units and outdoor units so this is how you can generate your uh, report after finish your design of the VRF system so it will be easy for you to interpret the results later after your design if you have these reports you can easily proceed for installation of the machines and uh, everything going to discuss uh, VRF system additional refrigerant charge calculation so there I have prepared an excel sheet to show you the calculation for additional refrigerant needed for your system if you remember that last time I have uh, used this software VRF selection tool to design and draw our system and uh, we have made uh, the PDF file also in the form of results so uh, our machines like outdoor units and indoor units these indoor units and outdoor units are pre-charged from the factory 
so their refrigerant is already calculated there but we want to calculate the additional refrigerant due to the piping which we have draw over here so right now I'm gonna calculate the additional refrigerant due to this piping because uh, indoor units outdoor units already pre-charged from the factory so let's start the calculation here I have an excel sheet so there I'm gonna use two tables for refrigerant charge calculation and uh, here is the formula which I have already applied here to calculate the additional refrigerant so this first table is uh, you can see over there dia is mentioned 6.4, 9.5, 12.7, 15.9, 19 and 22 mm so and this is the additional refrigerant needed per meter length due to 6.4 mm dia so, so 0 0.025 kg refri additional refrigerant is needed per meter length of the pipe due to 6.4 mm dia so all of these lengths are mentioned per meter per meter we need 0 0.055 kg additional refrigerant due to 6 9.5 mm dia so in the same way 0 0.35 uh, kg refrigerant is needed per meter of dia 22.2 mm so this is the formula which i'm gonna use to calculate additional refrigerant that is uh, l1 into uh, this additional refrigerant 0 0.025 because this is due to dia 6.4 and then L2 this is L2 and uh, L2 into uh, additional refrigerant unit is uh, 0 0.055 so this is the values which I will give over here L1, L2, L3, L4, L5 and L6 these are the real lengths as you can see over here real total length of the pipe dia 6.4 mm real length of the pipe dia 9.5 mm and uh, till uh, L6 that is real total length of liquid pipe dia 22 mm so these are the calculation we have to perform for liquid side not for the gas gas side so that's why it's written that real total length of liquid pipe dia 22 mm L6 length so all of the lengths we will provide over here whatever the lengths which we have used over here real lengths in our software so I'm gonna use these lengths over here so L1 which we will provide over here into 0 0.025 kg of the additional refrigerant needed per meter so in the same way that is L5 this is our L5 L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5 so L5 how much refrigerant do we need over here that is 0.25 kg per meter due to dia 19 mm so and uh, one more thing in this uh, formula is we need to add uh, additional refrigerant to the system compensation system horsepower compensation as you can see over here in this formula as you already understand and uh, second thing you have to add the compensation by system horsepower so this value will take from these tables this is the compensation due to the horsepower of the system outdoor unit which we have selected this is for the standard uh, efficiency models and this is for the high efficiency models so whatever the val uh, value of your outdoor unit horsepower let's say our outdoor unit horsepower is 14 and additional refrigerant needed due to the 14 horsepower outdoor unit is 8.5 kg so we need to add this one also here so let's uh, move back to our software and if you remember that I have uh, made uh, PDF files in my last video to interpret the data so I'm gonna open this table So as you can see that when we were making our VRF system design in my last video I have uh, created a PDF file 
from our design so we know that the outdoor unit capacity which we have calculated over here is that is 26 horsepower and we use two outdoor unit as you can see over here there are two outdoor unit one is 14 horsepower and the second is 12 horsepower total 26 horsepower and as you can see that through the software we have calculated 14.7 kg additional refrigerant so I will compare this value with the, the value in my excel sheet so I'm gonna let's go back here and you can see that uh, uh, this is all the diameters which we have used in our project and you have to uh, know one thing this first one is for gas this, these are the real uh, legs in meter and the first one is for the gas pipe and second one is for the liquid same first one for the gas second for liquid first for gas second for liquid and this is the total length for 3 by 8 including gas and liquid size that is 27.4 half inches for gas and liquid both that is 38 so we are going to use the liquid si side lens so first we have dia uh, 1 4 1 4 dia is uh, nothing but it's 6.4 mm so this is our length L1 so what is the length L1 1 by 4 is 6.4 mm so liquid size as you can see that 32 meter is the length this length in meter so 32 meter is the length which we have used here so I'm gonna give 32 meter length here and uh, now second is 9.5 mm as you can see 3 by 8 inches is 9.5 mm if you convert this in inches to mm it will be 9.5 mm so how uh, is as you can see the length which we have gas side is 7.5 since we are using the liquid side so it's 19.9 mm 19.9 meter sorry not mm 19.9 meter due to 9.5 mm diameter how much length 19.9 meter so 19.9 meter now i'm going to take the third length that is half inches half inch is nothing but it's 12.7 mm as you can see over here and uh, here it's uh, half inches and first one is for the gas second is for liquid so liquid size how much is the length that is 13.5 meter due to half inches that is 12.7 mm dia 13.5 meter length and now go to L4 L4 is uh, due to the dia 15.9 mm 15.9 mm is same as 5 by 8 inches if you convert this in mm it will be 15.9 mm so 5 by 8 uh, how, how much is the length on the liquid size that is total is 28.8 .8, gas side is 19.9 meter which we have uh, uh, and you know that these lengths which we have uh, uh, calculated from this project which we have created before in my last video so every data is in the table form which we have created in last video so now this is uh, L4 due to the dia 15.9 that is 8, 5 by 8 inches so liquid size, uh, liquid side length is 8.9 meter as you can see over here, 8.9 meter. So 8.9 meter. And uh, L5, L5 is the length due to the dia 19 mm. 19 mm. 19 mm is nothing but it's 3 by 4 inches as you can see that gas side there is no lens zero, that is zero we did not use any dia 3 by 4 for the gas but for liquid it's 6 meters length we have used for 3 by 4 inches so 6 meter and uh, the last one is L6 L6 is uh, 
due to the diameter 22.2 mm and if you convert this into inches 22.2 uh, it will be 7 by 8 and as 7 by 8 inches 22.2 is 7 by 8 inches as you can see that gas side we have 10.8 and liquid side is 0 so we did not use any liquid pipe with 7 by 8 inch so this length is 0 used in our project so I'm gonna give this one as 0 so as you see that I have uh, provided all the lengths and I have uh, applied the formula over here all lengths we have uh, let me tell you again this L1 uh, the formula which we have used here is that is length L1 due to the dia 6.4 because this is the real length of liquid pipe dia 6.4 this is 32 meters as you know that per meter due to the dia 6.4 how much additional refrigerant charge is needed 0 0.025 kg so we have 32 meters so 32 into 0 0.025 you will get the additional refrigerant needed due to the dia 6.4 having length 32 meters so in the same way uh, length L3 that is 13.5 uh, meter used here and this is uh, the additional refrigerant needed 0 0.105 uh, per meter 0 0.105 kg per meter length the of dia 12.7 since we have 13.5 meter used in our project so 13.5 into 0 0.105 so this will give you the additional refrigerant charge needed due to the length uh, due to the dia 12.7 mm having length 13.5 meters so all of this you have to add and then in the last as i told you you have to add the compensation by the horsepower of the system so since we have uh, if you go over there and you will see uh, we have selected 26 horsepower system here as you can see over here outdoor unit is 26 horsepower and it's break down into two outdoor units that is 14 horsepower and 12 horsepower and you know that this is the standard efficiency model we have used not a high efficiency model so this is the standard efficiency model table and outdoor unit which we have used over here is 26 horsepower and uh, you know that it's 14 and 12 break down into two outdoor unit and you see that compensation by the horsepower is 8.5 so this 8.5 you need to add over here to get the additional refrigerant needed for your uh, piping as you can see that I have uh, added this G17 G17 is this value due to the system horsepower 8.5 kg additional refrigerant needed so you can see over here the additional refrigerant needed is 14.7 kg which we have calculated over here and if you go over there from our software uh, we have calculated here is additional refrigerant is 14.76 kg additional refrigerant 14.7 so here also 14.7 so we just compare this one with the software result so this is how you can calculate the additional refrigerant needed for your system i hope you guys learn something from this video for more videos keep watching my channel and don't forget to subscribe thank you